What's up guys, this is Philippe and today I want to show you one of my favorite tools when working with Databricks, Databricks Asset Bundles. So Databricks Asset Bundles enables you to manage your assets. So we're talking about job clusters, workflow machine learning models or application code, notebooks and so on uh, to manage that code in between your environments. So let's imagine you are using, you are creating a new feature. Your, your team or product owner has asked you to develop uh, a new code. And maybe as a part of this new code, you also need to change the definition of cluster. You need a bigger cluster or sort of more compute optimized or, or, or whatever change uh, you're doing there. Basically, after developing this feature and, and testing it in your development environment, you eventually would merge that code into your, your main branch to become your source of truth, so to speak. And once this pull request is opened and approved, idea is that your Databricks asset bundle is coming in combination with your um, CICD Python would then deploy this code into pre-production in an automated way. So basically all your changes are, are falling from left to right. Um, and your new definition of job cluster and your new application code would then be deployed to pre-production, can be well tested there again. And so this is a, a single change, but maybe after a, a few of these changes, maybe when, whenever Epic is completed or whenever you finish the sprint and whenever you would like to deploy all, that, uh, all of these changes into production, then basically, yeah, this, this specific, specific bunch of changes uh, can be then released into production. Maybe you would open, create a new version or attack your, your changes in your, in your repository. And basically all these changes can now become part of production, again, in an automated way by uh, your CICD pipeline. And so Databricks Asset Bundles enables you to, to do all of that in a very straightforward way. This is a tool created for that. And also some of you in the past might have used Terraform, to, to store your, your Databricks asset or with combination, in combination with Databricks APIs. And basically Databricks asset is, uh, is a tool that combines both and it abstracts all the complexity of, of these tools into very simple and approachable uh, developer friendly commands. So maybe whenever you would like to deploy your changes to pre-production, you, all you need to do is type a, a single line, data, uh, Databricks bundles deploy a dash, I think dash T, and then you would specify your env environment. So, um, so that would be pre-production in that case, and all the changes would be immediately applied against pre-production. Okay guys, so let's hop into a demo time. And in order to run the demo, we would need uh, Databricks workspaces. So for the sake of, of the, the show or the demo, I'll create two of them. So I'll create the development environment and pre-production environment. And there are a few ways you can do it. You can simply go to Azure, AWS, or, or Google and just manually and create and configure Databricks workspaces. Uh, I have used Terraform because I often do that uh, and I can simply do it in an automated way because I do have prepared Terraform project. Uh, if you'd like to also see how you can do it uh, using the, the Terraform template, please you can uh, go visit my Medium, uh, Medium profile, it's just type Medium Cloud Native Consulting and the article is called Effortless, Effortless to Manage Databricks workspaces with Terraform, I'll also try. Okay, so once I have created my Databricks environment, I am ready to start. So uh, these are my two environments. I just created two for development and production. And this is my URL for, uh, for my development. And this is my URL for pre-production. So what I want to do right now, uh, well, first of all, we would need Databricks CLI. There's quite a lot of great tutorials out there, uh, including the one from Databricks, so installer update Databricks CLI. And I'm a MacBook user, so I simply just need to, I can leverage Brew to install Databricks. Um, but yeah, there are also other ways to do it. Um, so once this is completed, then we can proceed into, yeah, uh, uh, proceed with our, our, our initiating our projects. So the very first thing I want to do, I want to just authenticate it authenticate into the Databricks workspaces. I'm just going to run Databricks out login and specify the host. So this is the host to my uh, de uh, development environment. And yeah, I'm just going to keep exactly the same name of the profile, just specifying enter. Okay, great. Seems like authentication was, uh, was successful. And now I'm going to do the same thing for my pre-production environment. 
great. Again, same profile name, authenticated. Perfect. Um, and just to double check that everything were went smoothly, I would like to go into my root folder. So I'm currently in a slash user slash Philip, and I'm gonna type cat dot data bricks uh, data bricks things config. So this is my Databricks config file. And as you can see that the default workspace have been the development one, that the first one that I used and the host authentication type Databricks CLI. Uh, so you can see it looks good. I do have two profiles uh, in there. So having, having that, we can continue to the next stage. Okay, so we are ready to initiate Databricks bundle. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the folder wherever we would like to create our projects and I'm gonna just run Databricks bundle in it, simple as that. And yeah, for our default um, Databricks profile is gonna be the first one, so the, the link to our development. I'm gonna just press enter. And we have a few options, like what kind of template, we can use a default, a default Python, default SQL, but actually to make things a little bit more exciting, I'm just gonna use DBD SQL, just to show you some additional cool features. I'm gonna uh, hit enter. And at this stage, we're gonna be asked to uh, yeah, get a project name. So I'm gonna use CNC Cloud in consulting demo one. And next step is to specify HTTP path of the warehouse. So I'm just gonna simply go into compute and here in the top of my development um, space, I'm gonna use SQL warehouse. And here the connection details, we can sim simply see HTTP path, right? So I'm gonna copy that and I'm just gonna paste it here, press enter. Initial catalog, yeah, we can we can use, uh, when, whenever we're using uh, Unity catalog, you can use different catalog, but for the sake of keeping things as simple as possible, I'm just gonna use Hive Metastore. And yes, I would like to, anytime I, I develop my code, I would not like to interfere with work of other developers. So any tables or, or views I create, I wanna create them in my own own sort of um, uh, schema or, or, or catalog, right? So um, yes, I wanna do that. And perfect, simple as that. My bundle has been initiated here. <clears throat> okay, so this is the, the bundle structure. And before we continue, we can still, we still need to make small adjustments. Uh, so I need to do some renaming. So as opposed to production, I'm actually gonna be use pre-production. And uh, I need to update the host of pre-production because currently it's still pointing to my development and that's not what I would like. I need to make changes also to profiles. I need to update HTTP path of my warehouse. Uh, and, and I also wanna make some small changes to to those of you who know how dbd works i just want to make sure that my uh, sql statements are uh, yeah, very simple uh, if i go to models this is basically a folder where where my my recipes how to create my views and tables are located and i just want to things, uh, keep things as simple as possible for the sake of this demo so i'm not going to do any material materialization i just want to keep uh, keep simple views uh, because this would mean that i need to require my storage accounts so um, I'm gonna make these changes and I'll see you guys in a moment. Okay, I have made all the necessary changes, so I'm ready to deploy them. And before I do that, I'm just gonna quickly show you my development Databricks workspace. So as you can see, uh, there are no workflows here uh, in the workspace, in, um, in my users space. There's basically, there are basically no files. So what I'm gonna do right now is yeah, go into uh, CD into the, the bundle folder. And I'm just basically gonna execute Databricks bundle deploy dash T for development, which is also the default environment. So I might as well just do that. Loading. Okay. Uh, so seems like uh, deployment has been completed and successful. Now let's see what has changed. Okay, so in my root folder, um, so actually in my user folder, I do have the, the bundle folder, which contains the, the necessary files and artifacts. And if I go into workflow now, I can see that I do have a job here, right? C uh, CNC demo one job. So let's just kick it off. Okay, so I had to wait for a tiny second, but my job has completed. And you can see that the two 
uh, views were created, orders row and orders daily. And if I go into my catalog, I now would be able to yeah, view my tables in Hive Metastore. And very importantly, because I really wanna, like anytime I make changes, I wanna isolate them uh, not to interfere with work of other developers. So you can see that they were basically created in my own schema. Um, so orders daily, orders row, they're here. Okay, so let's say now that I would like to make some more changes and deploy them using uh, asset bundles. Now I'm gonna go into my, my editor and I'm gonna copy one of the files. I, I would like, to, let's just say I would like to um, add a new table. So I'm gonna call it actually new table, just like that. And I'm gonna just source from orders daily. And you know what, I'm again just gonna keep it super simple. Just gonna select everything from orders daily. So the table that has been created so far. I'm gonna save it. And again, let's maybe go into into our yeah, into our resources and I, I want to edit edit the job so this is uh, my job and I can change many things I can change the cluster I can change any any uh, comments that that will run but you know what again keeping things simple uh, I just want to change the name my new uh, job name and again simple as that I'm just gonna basically redeploy to development enter Okay, great. It has been it has been deployed. So now I'm gonna go back to my workflow, and immediately I can see the the new job name. So just to be sure, I'm gonna trigger it and wait till it completes. Okay, so my job has succeeded, and as you can see now, I have also the new view, which is called counterintuitively new table, um, and also my job has a new name. So let's say for a second of example that these are all the changes I wanted to make and now I would like to deploy these changes into pre-production. So in order to do that, I'm gonna again go to my uh, yeah, local, um, local development environment and all I need to do is um, just to do Databricks bundle deploy dash T and pre Broad. Simple as that. So what's gonna happen now is that this bundle that have we have previously deployed into development is gonna be deployed in my pre-prod um, pre-prod Databricks workspace. Okay, deploying complete. Great, we have a warning. I'm uh, well aware of that warning, but uh, for now we just wanna we just wanna test things. So I'm not worried about that. And as you can see in a, in the workflow, we have new new job name. Uh, I'm pretty sure you have noticed that there is no um, no prefix like here, dev Filipa Stuska, because now I have used a production mode, which means that any changes I'll create here would uh, would be cr created in the in the regular pre-production schema as opposed to my own private schema, so to speak. So what we can do now, I will just uh, trigger that just to check that everything works ex as expected. And I'm gonna come back in a second. Well, as a matter of fact, the job has completed successfully in pre-production, which means that things are working as expected and we have complete our mission. So that was it. This is how you manage, uh, how you manage your environments using Databricks asset bundles. And at this point, I also wanna mention few things that I didn't really raise during the, the demo. So first of all is the authentication type. Like when I'm, I was showing you guys the demo, I was deploying it from my local environment and I just used like a user authentication. But in a regular project, in a regular uh, scenario, you might use a different form of, of, of authentication. An example, example could be short leaf uh, developer tokens. Second of all, I did deploy my changes using commands from my local environment, but on your real life project, you might consider automation like CICD uh, deployment from development to pre-production. Pre maybe when you, when you um, make a pull request and maybe whenever you tag your, your, your branch or make a release, then that's when you would like to move to, to production. 
Uh, thirdly, I also didn't really talk, uh, touch about permissions. For now, anytime I will deploy these changes, I'm the only user who can access that. And maybe that's actually what you want, perhaps in a development environment, but maybe uh, when it comes to your production environment, maybe you, you wouldn't even like to have a right uh, access to that. Maybe you would like to make sure that only your um, production entity or production user have written write access and maybe your own private user should only have read access perhaps. So this is another thing to consider. That was it. Thanks so much for watching. It has been a fun project for me to record. And if you have any comments, questions or things you want to raise, you can always reach me on LinkedIn or cloudnativeconsulting.nl. Until next time.